Welcome to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper, and we start with breaking news in the money lead. Fears of another recession causing panic on Wall Street today. The Dow taking a dramatic tumble, ending the day down more than 700 points at the closing bell. 800 there on the chart right there. The huge slide was set off by one single warning, experts say, a specific economic indicator that has historically predicted oncoming recessions, a measure that flashed a red warning light for the first time since 2005. I want to go right to CNN's Christina Leshy at the New York Stock Exchange. And Christina, how bad was the damage today? It was a bloodbath. We're down 800 points, a pretty dramatic slide, even in the final minutes of the closing bell, Jake. This is investors sending a very clear signal to President Trump that they do not like his ill-planned and so far fruitless trade war, and they are fleeing these risky assets, fleeing stocks, looking for cover in other parts of the market, like the bond market. And that is what's causing the phenomenon that you just described, which is the inverted yield curve. And what that essentially means is that it costs less, it costs more for a borrower to borrow over a shorter amount of time than a longer amount of time. That is an unnatural state of affairs. And if you take a look at this chart, recessions have followed each time we've had an inverted yield curve. This is very troubling to the market. It's this rush to safety that has investors particularly concerned. And by the way, investors also digesting the fact that the deal maker in chief may not be able to get to a deal with China. That is putting a paralysis on business from the CEO of a multinational corporation right down to the Iowa farmer. They cannot make decisions without knowing where this trade war is going, and they don't know where that is right now, Jake. All right, Christina Leshy at the New York Stock Exchange. I want to bring in CNN Global Economic Analyst Rana Faruhar along with Mark Zandi, who's the chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Uh, Ronald, let me start with you. The, the yield curve is what everyone on Wall Street is talking about. Every time uh, it's dip, you see the recession shortly after uh, shaded in yellow. I have to ask, though, when it dropped in 2005, we didn't see an official recession for uh, another two years. Does that mean that this recession, assuming this is actually predictive and actually uh, correlated, that it might not be in the immediate future? That's true. The timing tends to vary, but it's always a big predictor. I would look, though, and say that we have a record amount of debt on the books right now, more debt than we had before the great financial crisis. There are a number of other indicators that are actually blinking red for me. Uh, manufacturing and industrial indexes are down in both the U.S. and Europe. Con U.S. consumers, who've been pretty robust, are, are actually starting to look a little weaker, cutting back credit card balances, scaling back on purchasing gasoline in the middle of a holiday vacation season. So there's all kinds of things that have been leading up to this. And at the end of the day, two big things, which is the fact that we're probably not going to get a significant U.S.-China trade deal uh, for reasons we can discuss, and also the fact that the Fed cutting rates simply didn't buoy the markets the way it used to. I think we are at the end of 10 years of easy money. Uh, and, Mark, there's the international factors. Uh, President Trump's on and off trade war with China, yeah. Toronto just referred to. Germany's economy shrinking in the second quarter, moving it closer to recession. Uh, the Brexit situation in the U.K. Uh, Mark, do you think that we are already in a global recession? We're pretty close, uh, Jake. Um, I think Europe arguably is in recession. I mean, the German economy, as you pointed out, contracted in the second quarter. So did the British economy. It contracted. And those are two very large Italian economy, very close to recession. So Europe's pretty close, and clearly the Asian economy is struggling significantly because of the trade war. Global uh, Asian central banks uh, last week slashed interest rates in an attempt to get ahead of the slowing economy. And then we got a data dump from China last night. Uh, last month, uh, they, were, they were just horrid. The numbers were, were awful. Industrial production growth in China is the week it's been in 17 years. Retail sales growth is slowing. So if we're not in recession globally, we're pretty close. And it's going to weigh on us here. The U.S. economy is starting to struggle. And if, this, if the president can't figure out a way to, to find some kind of face-saving arrangement with, uh, with China pretty soon, we will be in recession. Well, Ronald, let me ask you about that, because um, there's a piece in The Washington Post that basically says the White House doesn't really seem to have a plan beyond pressuring the Fed to lower rates. What should the president be doing right now other than bashing Jerome Powell on Twitter? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, really good question. Yeah, plan A, just lowering rates, is not working. There is no Fed plan B. What we really need is a workable trade deal with China. The Chinese have made it very clear that they will come to the table, but they're not going to take a deal that's not a deal between equals. Unfortunately, we have a president that seems constitutionally unable to consider something a win unless he crushes the other side. Chinese are not going to accept that. And they have drawn a line in the sand. And when they do that, they don't back away. And Mark, when stocks have fallen like today's fall in the past, uh, experts say, don't touch your investments. Uh, everything ultimately will, will work out. But, but if we are headed for a recession, are investors or people who manage these portfolios, especially retirement accounts for, for, for uh, middle income folks, are they expected to just sit back and watch? What should people do? Yeah, just don't pay attention. For the for most of us, the, you know, the market will go up, it'll go down, it'll go all around. Uh, you know, timing, uh, 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 timing recessions are, are are very difficult. Timing movements in the stock market are even more tough. Just just don't look. You know, forget about it. I mean, obviously, if you're a baby boomer like me, or you know, close to retirement or in retirement, you you should have a uh, long conversation with uh, with a professional who thinks about managing money for a living. And they can give you some advice. But for, for most Americans, just ignore it. Don't pay attention. All right, Mark Zandi and Rana Faruhar, thank you so much. Uh, let's chew over this with our political uh, experts. The president is obviously uh, watching what's happening uh, on the market. He's tweeting six tweets on the subject. Uh, part of his tweets in the last hour, one says, our problem is with the Fed. He went in to call the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, quote, uh, clueless Jay Powell. Um, First of all, we're a long way away from the buck stops here. Yeah. Uh, but but is there a plan there beyond I, tweets? It seems like the plan may be to just make sure that there's someone else to blame if things go south. And right now, it's looking like that's going to be Jay Powell, like that he will have to take the that he may have to uh, kind of bear the brunt of this from the president, because if things go bad, President Trump's going to say, well, things were going really well, but the Fed just kind of messed me up. Because he doesn't want to talk about what's going on with China and how, uh, even though he tweeted that trade wars were good and easy to win, that's just not happening right now. And you saw the administration blink this week when they said, oh, we're not going to put a 10 percent tariff on all 300 billion of imports, uh, extra additional imports from China, we're not going to do that because it might hurt consumers. It might affect us, which is the total opposite of what President Trump has been saying. And so he doesn't want to feel that kind of pain in the economy, but there are some things that right now, if they can't get that trade deal, he's not going to be able to put that off. And, and she's right. I mean, this is a complete contradiction to what President Trump has been saying, that China is the one that pays for all the tariffs when he acknowledged that he was uh, going to ease up on some because it would hurt American consumers. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm an eternal optimist. Maybe the fact that, and my wife says it's a genetic defect, by the way, <laughs> that if that there's a real possibility uh, that there is, they're inching forward, and that's part of the reason he also said he wasn't going to put, I think it was 25% uh, on those tariffs, which would have been pretty tough on the economy. There are things that the president can do, and I, I wouldn't panic. I, I, I agree. A, a, a calling a recession is a fool's game, as most economists will say. Mm -hmm. It is a indicator, uh, and then the mar on the yield, and then the, the markets dropping. We've had this before. We've had corrections in the market. It doesn't mean we're going to, you know, run quickly into a recession. My argument is, if the president steps up now, does an infrastructure bill. Uh, un un uh, unemployment is still extremely low. I mean, there's lots of good things to build on. Re-engage with our European friends on the China issue. I think if you started announcing a few of those things, you could see that this thing could be averted from uh, rolling into the ditch. And Jen Psaki, former communications director for the Obama White House, I do want to give you the, the pleasure of the uh, game we occasionally play here. There's a, there's a tweet for it. There's always a tweet for it. <laughs> always. In 2012, President Trump tweeted about your former boss. It's Monday. How many more excuses will Obama make today about the economy? Again, the president gets blamed no matter what, whether it's fair or whether it's not fair. Uh, and if this economy is starting to sputter, at the very least, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be voters will hold President Trump accountable. That's true. And that's a reality no matter who is president, that whoever is sitting in the Oval Office will get the blame 
or the thanks for where the economy is. Look, President Trump has been getting credit for the economy of the last three years. That is a continuation of the Obama recovery. I think most economists will tell you that, but it's hard to argue that point. I think what Mike said is a really important part here, and this is when, why it would be great if he had a fully functioning policy team, which he doesn't, is that there should be a consideration at this point. What can he do? He can consider what kind of stimulative actions, what kind of efforts that can help create jobs, help uh, prepare for a turn in the economy, what they can consider and, and get through Congress. They don't have a functioning process, and I think that's going to be a real problem here as well, because some of the indicators were beyond China. They were about the uh, housing market. You know, you've seen them on the housing market. You've seen them on manufacturing. So there are other areas where his team should be watching, and it's not clear they are. And, and, and Jeff Zeleny, I want you to take a listen to the president's top trade advisor, Peter Navarro, uh, earlier today. The biggest problem we're fighting right now at the White House um, is the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy. We lost a, almost a point of growth in, in Q2 uh, simply because the Fed had raised the interest rates too far too fast. So again, the blame, and I'm not saying that the Fed uh, plays no role in this, but, but they're going to need to have more answers and solutions as as Mike was just suggesting. Sure, particularly because the president has tried to own the you know, extraordinary uh, soaring stock market. I mean, he has uh, you know, tried to make that, uh, you know, suggest that it was because of him, and it, it wasn't. But the reality is, though, I've been remarkably surprised, we'll see how long this lasts, at how resilient Trump voters have been, how patient they have been with his policies in Iowa and other farm states.